What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Fun Boxing with Will. I am your host, Will, with H2OCO Film and Photo, and uh, today we're going to be doing a comparison video on a topic that I have personally searched online to see if I could find any information about. And other than specific millimeter lengths, uh, I have not found any actual comparisons on just the two separate lenses when you're looking at Canon and Young Nuo lenses. So if you are new to photography, new to uh, content creation, cameras, and purchasing gear and lenses, this is definitely a video you're going to want to stick around for. So let's get into this. everybody and we're back uh, before we get started with the video I just want to really thank all of you out there who subscribe to my channel and anybody who even just stopped in for a view uh, I really appreciate you guys you guys are the heart of the reason I do these videos I do them so that I can give people comprehensive and uh, actual not falsified or paid for reviews on products uh, as I am a small channel I, I Everything you see me review on this channel, I spend money out of my own pocket to get these items. Um, actually, that's why I didn't get to put out a video last week. Uh, shipping got delayed on the recent item. It was a Young Nuo 85mm 1.8 aperture lens that I had picked up. I specifically wanted to use for this video, and it delayed a week in shipping, so I had a little bit of an issue there, and as to that's why I didn't put out a video this week. So if you do find any of this content in my video at all useful or helpful, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, I really appreciate you guys, and you guys just motivate me to keep putting more videos out here and more reviews out here for you guys. So, um... Like I said, today we're going to be doing a comparison video on Young Nuo and Canon lenses, which if you are new to photography, if you're new to content creation, uh, one of the first things that shocked me about getting into this field was that uh, when I grew up, I thought a great camera was one of like a Sony power shot or a, uh, a Canon cyber shot, point and shoot camera. And I figured, geez, this is expensive. This is a $400 camera. That, that's pretty pricey. And, and for a good camera, that's, that's expensive, you know. And then I, uh, I, I did a little bit more research, and I found out that those weren't even the pro cameras. Pro cameras are the cameras I saw in the newsrooms at the, uh, the, the TV conferences with the president or the, the photographs that were taken at the Olympics were taken on certain types of cameras and if you do your research and look into it uh, you'll realize these are DSLRs or mirrorless SLRs which are interchangeable lens cameras and uh, as as much many of you probably have I didn't go to school for any of this I've learned everything that I know from my my video experience and my photography that I used to build my company I learned it all on my own. I've probably spent about 2,000 hours on YouTube just learning everything I can about uh, exposure, the, the exposure triangle with shutter speed, your f-stop, which is what your shutter speed uh, relates to, along with ISO and how these things affect an image. Um, a lot of the things that I learned uh, uh, were I had to rewatch a couple times to absorb the information. Crop factors on a sensor, a C sensor camera, a crop sensor camera. I mean, uh, just different things like this. And so, in doing so, I came across um, very a, a wide variety of videos that that explained that you will get different looks with different lenses. And so when I first got into it, I was like, you know what, I'm going to get every lens I can. I want to have a collection of lenses that's so massive that any kind of look I want to achieve, I can achieve it. And I've, I've gotten, you know, somewhere close to that. I, I think I own about, let's see, two, three, five. I own about seven, eight lenses, something like that, that, that vary in a, in a variety of different millimeter lengths. Uh, I own an 18 to 55 millimeter Canon. I own a 24 millimeter Canon I'm filming on right now, actually. Uh, I own a uh, 35 millimeter. I own an 85 1.8. I own, oh, uh, geez, so many, so many 
my first lens I picked up was a 50, a nifty 50. Uh, I was told nothing but good things about these lenses and they really are amazing lenses. Now, one of the aspects of photography and lenses that you learn when you start off in this industry is that depending on the type of photo you want and what they call depth of field, uh, you're going to want a, a lower aperture. So when you buy a lens, some lenses like this Canon kit lens, this is a Canon STM lens, it is an 18 to 55 millimeter lens which means it's not a prime lens. A prime lens is a lens that you cannot zoom in and out on. This is a zoomable lens so this is not a prime lens and generally uh, prime lenses have lower apertures than non-prime lenses which is better for low light photography. Uh, essentially an aperture is an iris in a camera. Think of it like your eye and when you have a lower number for your iris it is wider open and it allows in more light so as opposed to a, a 5.6 aperture that's gonna have a smaller smaller iris letting in less light than a 1.8 which would open up way wider and allow you to get a much shallower depth of field or uh, a nice creamy bokeh what they call bokeh or bokeh now that is just a descriptive word to tell you the quality of the background blur and the image separation between your subject in the foreground and the image quality of the blur in the background. Uh, if you notice, a lot of product photography entails this. A lot of professional photography uh, it, it relies around, it's, it's targeted around bokeh and the fact that the model and the portrait in the forefront on the magazine cover is nice and crisp and clear and in the background you see this blurry, blurry image in the background that, that totally separates the two subjects so you know what your eye is supposed to go to and look at. Now, um, you have to have low aperture numbers to get that kind of a blurry effect and as well as an f-stop can definitely uh, change the the background blur as well so um or yeah f-stop i'm sorry f-stop is your your aperture so um that that's definitely going to change the image now uh when you go out and you first start looking at lenses much like i did you will be horrified at how much they cost uh, depending on what kind of photography you do, like landscape photography, sometimes you want to get a low light shot in landscape photography and the only way to do that is to get a lens that has a 1.4, a 1.8 aperture and I've noticed that the more telescopic these lenses get, meaning the further you can, the further back you can focus the lens or zoom in and out, the apertures generally start to get higher in number and to get one that has a really low aperture value and a zoom capability they they range anywhere from $120 for a cheapo nifty 50 lens all the way up to $3,000 some lenses are worth more than my camera I own a few lenses that are worth more than my camera which is it's crazy to think about how expensive that is um, so when you hear budget lens when you're in the big you first entering this it everybody is like okay how show me show me i want the budget lens and as a general rule for young nuo what i have come to find is that the lenses seem to be right around exactly half price from their counterpart canon counterpart um as for example i picked up this uh this is a young nuo oh no that's a 35 my apologies this is a young nuo 50 millimeter lens um its counterpart was $240 on Amazon for the Canon version, but for the Young Nuo version, I believe I paid $99 plus tax. So it came out to be just over $100, I think $107 with tax. So for me, that was a great deal. Who, was, who would spend twice the amount of money on the same exact product, you know? Uh, but now that I've owned, uh, and I do own a plethora of lenses in both variety, Canon and um, Young Nuo, I am here to tell you about the differences. And there are some differences. So the first difference that I've noticed, which to me it isn't a huge deal breaker, is the quality of materials that you'll get with the Young Nuo seem to be on the most, for the most part, very cheap in comparison to the Canon counterpart lenses. If I hold up a Canon lens, this is an 18 to 55 millimeter stock uh, kit lens, and then I hold up a Young Nuo lens, 
I can instantly tell the difference. The Canon lens is much heavier. Uh, it's made out of premium plastics and metal. The mount on the system is 100% uh, actually crazy. It's not. This Canon lens mount is plastic. Um, I use an EF, EFS mount on my T7i, or T8i, I'm sorry, and on my, uh, the, the camera I'm currently filming on, my M50 uses an M mount, uh, Canon M mount. But um, for the most part, Canon lenses have metal uh, mounting brackets on the back of them. Uh, I have only purchased to this date one lens through Yongnuo that I've bought that was, uh, it's the 85mm 1.8 aperture lens, and that lens surprised me. It not only had a viewing window for your focal length indicator, it also had a metal mounting plate, which was impressive. I was very, sh I was very surprised by that. But um, as far as build quality, I can shake my Canon lenses, and there's not very much rattling around in there. I don't know if you can hear that. You shake a Yongnuo lens and you're going to hear some rattling in there. It's much lighter. Like I said, they have plastic mounts for the most part as opposed to the metal counterparts in the Canon. The uh, quality of plastic seemed to be a little bit cheaper. But does any of that matter? Really, what matters is the image. And so I did some comparisons between some images that I, take, I, I took with the uh, Canon and a Yongnuo lens. And I was very shocked to notice that there's not much of a difference. Once you hit about aperture ratings of like 3.5 and higher, uh, there's a very, very minimal difference in, in the image that you, you get out of your camera. Now, I will say I noticed that when I opened my, my aperture all the way up on a, um, let's say, a Canon 35mm, or a Canon 85mm lens, or I'm sorry, a Yongnuo 85mm lens or a 35mm lens. Uh, and then I compared it to the same exact millimeter focal length lens in Canon. When you open the aperture all the way up to 1.8, there is a little bit more softness to the image with the Yongnuo lens as opposed to its counterpart in the Canon lens. It's a little bit sharper, but they both are very soft images when they're all the way open. Uh, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, I know that I've heard that Zeiss glass produces the best glass in the world, which if their price tags are anything to indicate that, I would have to agree. Um, I've never had the luxury or privilege of shooting with a Zeiss lens, but I've heard nothing but great things about Zeiss, Hasselblad. There's a couple other, um, in, other companies out there that produce very good glass. Now, when you think about the price of a lens, you've got to understand the optics in a lens that you're using are incredibly intricate. There is layer upon layer of glass and working, moving parts inside of a lens, and I can understand why they're so expensive. The optics alone, the glass has to be shaped and polished perfectly. Otherwise, you're going to get things like aberrations in the screen. You're going to get distortions and, and just all around bad images. And so for them to have put so much effort and time into making something so intricate, tiny, and precise, so well crafted, it really is a testament to the product quality on any lens that you purchase. So I can definitely understand why better quality lenses have way better images for the most part. But Yongnuo, they're not bad lenses. They, they, for half the price, you're getting a lens that is 95% comparable in, in image quality itself. So I do believe that for beginners, uh, it is a great, great um, way to travel if you're looking for a budget lens. I will, however, say that if you are starting to do more professional work where you're getting paid for some work, then I would definitely think about upgrading to Canon lenses or Zeiss lenses if you can afford it. I've never owned one, like I said. The day that I'm able to afford a Zeiss lens is going to make me a happy man, I'll tell you that much. But um, all of my videos I put out here on YouTube, I, I use Canon glass. I, I do, I think in a couple of videos, I've used a 50 millimeter focal length for those videos and they were young Nuo. I love the way they look. Uh, I, I have nothing against it. The biggest difference that I have found 
is a problem with the Yongnuo lenses, and I'm going to show you that here in just a second, is if you're in the field of video content creation, if you make video advertisements, product placement advertisements, or hell, even a YouTube video like what you're watching right now, um, there is a disadvantage to having a Yongnuo lens, and what I've noticed in that is that the Canon lenses have a very quiet focus motor. The focus motor inside of the Canon lens compared to the Yongnuo lens is less, more, it, it's more than double the, 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 I'm sorry, the Yongnuo lens is more than double the decibel level of the Canon lens. So, and that's a pain in the ass. If you've ever edited a video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, there are ways that you can go into your audio designer and you can remove the sound of a motor, a focus motor, in a video. So at the end of the day, if you're good at editing, it doesn't really affect your end product. But why do the extra work if you don't have to? If you're shooting with a Canon lens, you don't have to do that extra work because the Canon lens is gonna be less than half the, 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 the noise that you're hearing from it. And as an example, I'm gonna show you right now, this is, uh, this is my T8i. It is, at the moment, one of my favorite cameras I own. Um, I really wanted that that really creamy background bokeh, and I do get it with my 50mm and my 30mm, 35mm lens to a degree, but I wanted something that was just the bokeh king, you know? I wanted something that would literally completely blind out the background and bring my, my subject into focus, and, and I went out and I bought the uh, 85mm, 1.8 aperture uh, Yongnuo lens and I went with Yongnuo because I went online and for the Canon counterpart it was $440 for the lens and that's more than the camera I'm shooting on right now cost me. As opposed to $220 for the Yongnuo version I decided to go with the Yongnuo version and I'm going to get into the, the ups and downs of that particular lens here in a second. As an example I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about as far as the focus motor is concerned on these cameras, or I'm sorry, on these lenses. When uh, when you're using a Yongnuo lens, this is how much difference there is in the audio quality when it focuses in. So you can hear it. Now, Okay, if you'll notice, my focus motor had to, when I held this camera up in front of the lens, I was out of focus and it had to zoom in on me. You didn't hear any noise when it focused in on me because that's a Canon lens I'm shooting on. But if I was shooting on this Yongnuo lens, you can hear how loud that focus motor is. Again. You see the difference there? When I'm going into clarity, when you see me clear up, the motor's working on the Canon lens as well. And when you, when you see that, you don't hear it. But if it was this lens I was shooting on, you would most definitely hear that. But as an example, I'm going to go ahead and show you two portraits. First, I'm going to show you a portrait I took of my wife and my kid at the park. It's not really a portrait. It's more of a candid shot. But if you'll notice... You see how the background is pretty much in focus, almost to the point to where it's as in focus as the subjects in the folk in the, in the frame with them, my son and my daughter there. Or I'm sorry, my son and my wife, not my daughter. I don't know why. I, my wife is pregnant with a daughter, my daughter right now. So I, that must be a Freudian slip there. Uh, I'm really excited to meet her. And uh, it's June 7th, I believe, I will be meeting my daughter. So, um, but... But if you notice, my wife and my son, they're pretty much just as in focus in that photo as they the background was. But then compare that to this photo right here of just my wife. Now you see how the background in this image is completely blurred out? That is an amazing background bokeh to me. And actually, I'll show you another photo. This is just a yellow fire hydrant here. But in this photo, it's even a better example of how creamy the blur in the background can actually get. And, and it's just amazing. Now, I'm going to zoom in on this photo, though. And, and I will put this as a disclaimer. The 85mm Yongnuo lens is the only lens that I've found this issue with. But if I zoom in right here, you see that on the edge of the fire hydrant, how it's got that purple lens aberration? 
Um, that only happens when the aperture is wide open at uh, 1.8. And if you close it down to 1.3 and lessen that background blur and kind of cr uh, focus in more on the background as well as the hydrant, uh, once you hit about 3.5 on your aperture, that purple line is gone. But uh, I, I think it's a distortion issue. Now, I don't know. I can't tell you if it's just my 85 millimeter lens is faulty, the, per the, the, the specific lens I purchased, or if every one that they produce is like that. But that is an issue to me. I don't like that, and I can get rid of it in Photoshop, uh, but it is a pain in the butt. It, it's, ex like I said, extra work that we have to do that if we had a more expensive, nicer quality lens, you wouldn't have to do that. It would be a workaround for it. You'd just get a better image to begin with. So, as I do love and recommend Yongnuo lenses for especially beginner photographers, hell, even veteran photographers, if you've been in the industry this long, that long though, I would hope that you've made enough money to be able to afford really nice gear. I wish I could afford really nice gear, but unfortunately, uh, there's a limit to what I can afford at the moment. And um, so, like I said, I, I would definitely recommend a Yongnuo lens for somebody who is, is cost friendly and has a budget for their, their product photography or their portrait photography. Um, they are great lenses. Personally, I own these lenses. I have a bunch of them myself. I've used them and I just wanted to put out an honest review, uh, not a promoted review, not a sponsored review. Uh, so yeah, that's essentially my opinion. I, I, I love them. They, they help the wallet out so much, but at the end of the day, I will eventually upgrade my lenses. So if you're on a budget, you're just starting out, definitely go out and check out these young Nuo lenses. Um, and that's about it for today, guys. I want to appreciate, tell you I appreciate you guys checking out the video. Tomorrow, fingers crossed, packages are on time. I should be getting my Mini 2, Mavic Air Mini, I'm sorry, Mavic Mini 2 coming in. So I'm going to be doing a review on that sometime later this week, if not tomorrow. And then I've got another review coming out here pretty shortly. So I'm going to try to catch back up to that one, of we, uh, one video a week for you guys. So anyways, other than that, uh, that'll be it for today. I hope you guys have a great night. Stay safe out there, and more importantly, stay creative, my friends. We need more of that in this world.